What are your thoughts on this one, Ali? As a general thought, when it comes to players, managers, and whoever is involved with a national team, and you're about to start the most important tournament in soccer, which is a World Cup, right? The fact that your thoughts are somewhere else, it bothers me. So Julian Lopetegui, Antoine Griezmann, whatever. Lopetegui is about to lead a national team who's one of the favorites to win the World Cup, and now his thoughts are with Real Madrid. That I don't like. Maybe that's the reality that we live in. Maybe that's the world we live in. But I don't like it, and I don't care for it. If I'm a player in that locker room, if I'm a fan of Spain, I'm thinking, wait a minute, why are we not focusing on what's in front of us? The most important tournament right here with an opportunity to win it, and we're thinking about Real Madrid, which, which by the way, then leads me to the next thing. You and Julian Lopetegui, who are you calling first? Well, you got to call Cristiano Ronaldo, don't you? You got to contact Gareth Bale, don't you? You got to talk to Sergio Ramos. And none of them you're talking to about the World Cup. You're talking to them about Real Madrid and what's ahead with Real Madrid. That bothers me. Uh, Julian Lopetegui just signed an extension with the uh, Spanish national team. And now he's going to Real Madrid. I understand they're from Real Madrid's perspective. They needed a manager. And they're usually in a position where they handpick a manager, where they can just go after whoever they want to. In this case, after the Cine Zidane saying, you know what, I'm leaving, they were all over the place, floundering for the last 10 days, not really knowing what their future was going to be. And it makes sense for them to say, hey, let's go after Lopetegui. From Lopetegui's perspective, I just don't care for the whole attitude of, balancing two different things. And these are two big things. It's Real Madrid and the, na and the Spain and Spanish national team job. And somehow you're supposed to be successful with both. I don't get it. All very valid points. <laughs> of course, his predecessor, Del Bosque, knows Real Madrid very well indeed. Isn't this just the way that Real Madrid works? This is the way that Spain works. They accept it. He's got players in that dressing room who he's able to now communicate with on a whole new level. <laughs> uh, yes. But I would like for him to communicate to that players about Spain. Not about Real Madrid. Uh, he can manage that show. Uh, uh, oh, oh, can he? All right. Well, let's say that Spain doesn't achieve the things that they're supposed to achieve in this tournament. You already, already have a reason to point out and say, well, wait a minute. We had, we had the attention and the focus of this team divided three days before the World Cup. Come on now. This, the timing is not ideal. The appointment for Real Madrid makes sense. As for Julian Lopetegui, I think there is, there, there is something to be said about my focus is single-minded here, now, with the World Cup. If Real Madrid really wants you, then tell Real Madrid, you know what? Hey, guys, you got to wait. You got to wait for another three weeks. You got to wait for another four weeks. When we're done with the national team, we can talk. But now my focus should be this. That's the approach I would take, but maybe I'm naive. Just a quick one then on looking beyond the World Cup. Mm. As a coach coming in there, is it dependent on what happens over the next few weeks? with regards to whether you'll consider that a success or whether he'll get off and running in the right way. If, if the negativity comes in, they fall and foul at the World Cup, he doesn't do the job, suddenly it's a negative picture for Real Madrid? It, well, it's a negative picture in that you got to get the situation sorted out with Ronaldo and Bale and what happens with the players, and, and you have to answer those questions. Once you answer those questions, then you can start evaluating Julian Lopetegui. But if he doesn't do well with Spain in the, in the World Cup, then you already are on a slippery slope. And can you re re really recover from that? I'm not so sure. I, I think you've opened up a whole kind of worms here that you did not need to open if you're Julian Lopetegui and really if you're Real Madrid. But in particular, personally, Julian Lopetegui, man, your job is with the national team right now. And I know this has worked in the past with Antonio Conte. I, I, I just don't like it. The whole premise of you thinking about Real Madrid and the national team, and we're going to juggle these things. Maybe people can walk and chew gum at the same time. I just don't see it for Lopetegui. Okay, well, Florentino Perez has clearly made up his mind. He's got the plan in place, and he's very happy with the announcement. As for the fallout for Spain, only the next few weeks will tell. But a three-year deal for Julian Lopetegui, the new Real Madrid manager. sempre bem focado, procuro não ler também tanto, tantas notícias, é, acredito que isso ajuda também, não ficar vendo tantas especulações e trabalhar com aquilo que, que tem, tem de real né, e, 
e nesse momento não chegou nada oficial e o meu foco está aqui, é, eu tenho um contrato com a Roma, né, tenho um contrato a cumprir com, com a Roma e estou muito feliz é, no futebol italiano, muito feliz na Roma, muito feliz com o meu momento, mas principalmente feliz em estar aqui é, representando a seleção, vivendo um sonho de infância né, e trabalhando muito forte para para conquistar essa Copa. Sim, o Neymar está muito bem, graças a Deus. É, acredito que como lidaram com o processo dele foi de uma maneira perfeita, ele tendo uma recuperação plena na, da parte clínica. né? É, lógico que no início, quando ele começou a trabalhar com bola, trabalhar com o grupo, teve aquele cuidado a mais. É, ele com certeza deve ter é, lidado muito com o medo né, que é normal depois de uma lesão grave assim é, e a gente também tentando cuidar cu cuidar muito bem dele nos treinamentos é, e aos poucos ele foi pegando confiança Jeff Carlisle, Tom Marshall, uh, the whole ESPN Deportes crew that's covering Mexico uh, is here as well. But like I said, we're a ways from downtown. Let's show the folks our neighborhood. Let's do it. We are actually in a Chinese home business park. Yes. We weren't sure if we could shoot with our big actual camera. So the wind that you hear right now <laughs> is because we're shooting off the cell phone. Participate. Ah, look at the fits and skits he's doing. I'm not tall enough to participate. Do you want to check it? Are you? Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Do I reach the high requirement? World Cup fever exists even right here in the supermarket. Check it out. It's green cheeks. No. no. Put, put it up, put it up. It's uh, These two are, are this, and that's, which is vegetable. It comes from the earth. Russian supermarket is going to have an entire aisle dedicated to vodka. Look at it. All right, man, so after walking through the biggest grocery store on planet Earth, we came out with a half a bag of groceries and a gallon of water. Yep. Hey, uh, Mexico's first training session in Russia is about two hours from now. Let's go, man. I gotta oh, get at least an hour of sleep. Let's get a nap. Yes. Today, with less than 48 hours to go until the World Cup starts in Russia, was to talk more about, well, the World Cup. Uh -huh. However, big story breaking in Europe as Real Madrid confirmed that Julian Lopetegui will be their new coach. Just a reminder, this is a man who is currently in charge of the Spanish national team. He will take charge of Real Madrid after the World Cup. This is a man who hasn't got too much domestic experience. He was manager of Porto back in 2014 for a couple of seasons before he took the Spain job. Before that, he very much worked with the youth team in Spain. He would manage Real Madrid Castilla back in 2008, 2009. That's their reserve team, if you like. He played for Madrid off and on, not renewing that much in 88 to 91. This really is a huge shock. Just to put it into context, when you take a look at the odds for the next manager, 25, 26 names are on that list. 
Lopetegui wasn't on it. Well, it just shows you what the book is not. <laughs> but no one knew. <laughs> this is it. sort of good job he's been doing for Spain because he's turned well, Spain around. He wasn't that good. He wasn't on the bookies <laughs> list. Yeah, but because they thought he would stay with Spain. And, you know, he, I think he did a very good job with the Spanish junior sides under, under 19, under 21. That's where he made his name. He didn't do quite so well at Porto uh, because he was brought there to win the championship. He didn't win the championship. But since he's been the manager of Spain, I think he's turned their fortunes around. They look a much better side. He's, he's sort of blended the old Spain of, of keeping the ball with more penetration. So I think he's done a good job. But I was surprised that he was the Real Madrid manager. Everyone's surprised. This is completely out of left field. The timing could not be worse. We're three days away from the World Cup. And Spain is one of the favorites to win this tournament. And somehow... Now the attention of Spain is divided because Julian Lopetegui has decided to take on Real Madrid. Look, I'm, call me old school. I don't know. But maybe your priority should be on the World Cup, which is about to start. Maybe you don't worry about Real Madrid. Maybe you tell Real Madrid, look, if you really want me, if you really want to have a conversation, let's do this after the tournament. Let me focus on what but I have. He's not looking after himself, Luke. Say everything goes wrong in the tournament, then he's never going to have a chance to manage Real Madrid again. So surely he's just pretty much second guessing yeah, well, himself. Uh, that's on Lopetegui. I'm saying from the perspective of the outside looking in, I'm thinking, man, your focus should be on having your team prepare. What is the first phone call that Julian Lopetegui is making to his players? Who, who, who's the first players he's reaching out to for Real Madrid? That's Cristiano Ronaldo, isn't it? I mean, don't you want to know and have assurances that he's going to be in your team? Who does Spain play in the first game? It's Portugal. So, honestly, it, 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 the timing is all wrong. And it's unacceptable, to be quite honest with you. The way I look at it is you focus on the team that you have in hand. You focus on the tournament that you have in front of you. You focus on the players that you have in your locker room. To be looking out for himself after the tournament, so be it. But right now, three days before the World Cup, the biggest tournament in the world, the World Cup, the biggest event in soccer and football across the world. Come on, man. Uh, the the reports in Spain suggested that, that uh, the Real Madrid players in the Spanish camp knew, and then someone else found out, so then they had to come public and tell everybody before the rumours and everything. Honest, I don't, care. I don't, don't bore me with how the story got out. OK, well, I don't it's care. never stopped me before. <laughs> I, I'm with Ali here 100%. Uh, I don't care what he does at Real Madrid down the line. We're going to focus <clears throat> on the World Cup, right? And here's you've got a guy who is managing, he said capable of winning the World Cup, but it's a difficult five weeks because you've got to manage a lot of problems, a lot of players, a lot of egos. You've got the tactics, the press, the media, the training. You've got everything to deal with, right? And he, I guarantee, what is he going to be doing? He's going to be half World Cup and half phoning agents. Try to talk to players. No, Sean. Sure. Well, well, are you telling me? presumptuous, isn't it? Are you telling me? Why can't you just say, Are right, you telling this me, time I'm focusing on Spain? Because people, and subconsciously, you cannot switch off. He will have one eye on what he needs to do at Real Madrid next it, year. Really? Do you believe that? It has that? worked in recent years. 100%. It's worked in recent years. Antonio Conte knew he was going to Chelsea, but it did well for Italy. They played far better than everybody thought they were going to play. Louis van Gaal was going to be the manager of Manchester United, but the Dutch got yeah. to the semi-final and won the third-place play. They got lucky. They may have got lucky, but it worked. Well, they were, they I'm got not lucky, saying it's the right thing. I agree with both of you, but it has worked before with I'm, Conte I'm, I'm, and... and okay. Look, I know that people can walk and chew gum at the same time, OK? Yeah. And, uh, but we're not talking about just any tournament, and we're not talking about just any team. We're, we're talking about... One of the favourites. Spain, and we're talking about Real Madrid. How you were able to juggle that... It, it's something that I don't think he should have put himself through, but more importantly, he should not be putting his players through because you know what a conversation is going to be in Spain and the Spanish media? You know what every press conference, every question is going to be about? And the players have now got an yeah. excuse as well. If yeah. they don't perform well, the manager wasn't focused. And There's he, the issue. The press, the manager wasn't focused. That's if we start losing games. And so he, that's the big problem. He has exposed himself as well yeah. because now you open, open a door that you didn't need to open. If Real Madrid was really interested in you, what is wrong with saying, hey, buddy, let's talk after the Because it might all go wrong at the World Cup. Well, he's got okay, no call. Well, hold on a second. If that's the way that you're approaching the tournament, then my, it might all go wrong. That's, but, that's but it. This is your one chance to manage Real Madrid. They come knocking. Well, he's say, coaching the Spanish national team. It well, doesn't get any bigger than I'll that. Say what? If he thinks he can't manage... It obviously does. If he thinks he's going to... you? No, for him. If, if, if the Spain job was so important, why would he turn down and rip up his contract that's got him in charge till 2020? 
did you not Probably three times the money. That's that the reason. I thought that the timing was all wrong. You said that it's the biggest job. It's clearly not for him. It's clearly not the biggest job. Money will also dictate it's not the biggest job because Real Madrid will pay three times as much as probably Spain are paying him. OK, so are you defending the decision? I'm not defending the are decision. Are you defending I'm, the decision? I'm just saying I'm that's saying the one reason he'd go. you're saying the biggest job coaching Spain. No. For him, it clearly isn't. Three days before the World Cup, yes. It's Spain, the Spain national team job, yes, is bigger than Real Madrid. Yes. Three days before the World Cup, yes. For him, clearly not. If you're, if you're saying... Well, listen, what, what, no, but, listen. If, he, you're, if you're saying... Oh, you had, had to take it now because if it all went wrong from at, at, at the World Cup with, with Spain, he wouldn't have got the Real Madrid, uh, Madrid job. If he thinks it was all going to go wrong from with Spain and this multi-talented group of players, it's never going to work from at Real Madrid. Yep. But what if they give him a contract? Can't manage, now or never. You can't now manage this Spanish to... team to a good finish at the World Cup. Might not win it, but to a good World Cup. He's never going to manage and deal with all the pressures at Real Madrid. I thought Never. Spain were going to win the, 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 the World Cup. That would change my mind. Oh, don't, don't start using that. Tell you what, the press no, 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 has left himself think, open yeah. to, this, to an absolute smashing from the Spanish press. If it goes a bit wrong for Spain, he is going to get absolutely battered. And, and Robbo, I think it was, it said that the players will just say, well, things haven't been quite right behind the scenes. The training's not been right. All the excuses will come wasn't out. There. And you don't need to too many, players don't need too many excuses to start. Pulling the wool over people's eyes. Anyway, they, they'll blame somebody else for the good luck. Because I, th hey, he'll be getting battered next year anyway because he's never out the microscope with Real Madrid. Anyway. He's a Real Madrid lover, isn't he? That's why he's, he's saying it's a good. Oh, that's why he was. That's why he was happy. He said nothing. Meanwhile, has angered some journalists because he said that he was going to make a statement about his future. This was his statement. Get ready. Uh -huh. I'm really very sorry. I know that many of you are waiting for my decision, but I will not be revealing it today. I have made my choice. However, today is not the time nor the place to say what it is. I, I, I actually don't. I actually think he thinks there's more people uh, waiting for the decision than there actually is. <laughs> there might be a few. Uh, but uh, some, some fans, but there's not that many around the globe waiting on Antoine Griezmann's That's decision. Quite a lot. Well, how many? Well, he's a big star, aren't they? They want to know, is he going to go to, uh, to Barcelona or stay at Atletico? The that, it's the Atletico Madrid fans that probably want to know. And Barcelona fans, you'd suggest. I'm sure they're not that well, desperate. They've Didn't got enough with... shirts again. They've got uh, right, they've Jules. Enough good enough players, if they're not. Uh, this is a big story. Where is he going? Well, that's the big question. Yeah, we really thought that today, because he rarely comes uh, to do press conferences when, he, when he's with the national team, we thought maybe today is the day where he's going to announce it. He's always said that he, were, he would reveal it before the start of the World Cup. So we thought, OK, today is the day. Actually, it wasn't the day at all. He said that he's made his manner, but he didn't reveal, as you said, uh, where he's going to go. He's either staying or going to Barcelona. We all know that. It's interesting because, as we all know, on July the 1st, his release clause goes down from 200 million euros to 100 million euros, which obviously will make it far more attractive for Barcelona to wait a little bit to sign him. However, there's also a lot of signs saying that he wants to stay, for example, in the Tomalema signing, uh, who's going to join Atletico Madrid. Griezmann had a, had a key role to play in that signing, which then would be strange for him then to help Lema coming to Atletico Madrid and then just going. Um, there's people around him who want him to stay. There's obviously you know, winning the Europa League and, and expecting a new deal uh, to be signed with Atletico Madrid. So, uh, for me, he's going to stay, but he's keeping the suspense a bit longer. Jules is in Moscow, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that. Um, it's not just say what, Griezmann's a great player. I love, I love watching him play, but he's become one big, boring yawn with his statements. <laughs> Honestly. One yeah, on big, the show, he'd fit in well. One yeah. big yawn. Uh, Robbo, what's he uh, going to do? What would you do if you were him? Uh, I think I would stay. Um, I think if he gets the big enough contract, he's still You turn down money. Barcelona? I think I would at the moment. I think you, I, I, I don't, where, where, I, you don't where are you going to win your trophies? Uh, probably Barcelona. But I think he's, he's, he's settled at uh, Atletico Madrid. He's got a good understanding now with Diego Costa. He's talking about Lamar coming. Sometimes you're better off staying at the club where you're loved and, and you know exactly what your role is in the easy side. Easy street. Yeah, sometimes people would call it easy street. Sometimes it's best for people to stay. And I think it'd be Where's your ambition? the right thing. I think he's still ambitious. You still want to make your team the best team. He wants to make Atletico Madrid well, champions, not... La Liga champions. He wants to make them a, 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 a big side in it's Europe. They're in the Champions League because they won the Europa League. So I think that he, 
of course he could go to Barcelona. Comfort and I think he would actually do OK staying at Atletico Madrid. I mean, you get one chance in your career a lot of times to go to some... It's like managing Real Madrid, one chance. This is the... Uh, shut up. <laughs> yeah. It's the one... It's a, one time in his career that probably four or five, maybe half a dozen of Europe's biggest clubs could all take this guy. Probably the only time. So you would go? Well, 100%. Take the chance now, you won't get it again. I just think that Antoine Griezmann and Atletico Madrid have achieved what they were going to achieve together. That's it. I think they've reached the ceiling. It's not going to get much higher. It was a great run, and so now it's time to find something new, find something different, set different challenges for yourself and set different objectives. This was the opportunity for Antoine Griezmann. From what we hear is maybe, maybe being comfortable in Madrid is, is what he, he, he thinks is best for him, maybe best for his family. Who knows? The truth of the matter is that the opportunity is there and he doesn't want to take it. Uh, what are French fans making of this? Because it is kind of distracting, isn't it, with the World Cup just around the corner, Jules? Yeah, it is a bit. And also, the question is, why, if he was staying, why not saying it? He could have said it two weeks ago. He could have said it after the Europa League final. He could have said, listen, I'm happy here. My family is happy. I'm staying. I like the coach. I, you know, I like the fans. I like him. Instead, he's, he's not saying anything that can make you believe, well, OK, because he's going then. But then there's also signs, as we said, that he wants to stay. I agree a bit with the boys on, in terms of the lack of ambition. Uh, although Barcelona's project, the way they presented it to him, is like, you're going to play wide. He's, he doesn't really want to play wide. So I can see the cons as well of joining Barcelona. It's, it's an interesting one. I just want, like, like Craig said, I want, I want an end to it. I want to know. I want him to say, OK, I'm staying, I'm going. But I think we've done enough. I can't remember them, but you can go and check them out. Uh, Burley's World Cup predictor over on the website. And speaking of predictor, it is time for Alejandro Moreno to step up to the plate and tell us exactly how he thinks the teams will get on in the World Cup. Let's start off with the group stages, as always. Take you through it. Uh, you've got Russia going through over Egypt, Spain, Portugal, no real surprise there. French, Denmark, Argentina, Croatia. Let's take it through uh, to the other groups. You've got Mexico not making it through, I think. I just feel that Mexico is a team that is going to have a lot of the ball and a team like Sweden feels comfortable in doing that. But Mexico doesn't defend set pieces very well and that Sweden is an area that they do very well. In that game, Sweden may just win with a set piece and would be enough for Germany and Sweden to go through. Belgium, England, meanwhile, Colombia, Senegal, Poland not making it. So let's just take a look then at how that sets things up for the bracket, starting off with Spain against Russia. Am I allowed to touch this or is it all you? No, you touch these bits now. Okay. All right, okay. Fine. I'm going to go with Spain. Okay. Argentina, Denmark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Self-explanatory, yes. Germany, Switzerland. Self-explanatory. Okay, well. now this is interesting. And Nick, Colombia, England. It gets a little interesting. And see, this is where I could go with my South American route. And that's what I'm going to do. Oh, you <laughs> teased me there. I just yeah. thought there might be a little yeah. bit of love for England. No, but there wasn't. wasn't. Okay, let's go to the other side. South American, Uruguay to go through. Is this where we're just going now? <laughs> I think the roots of South America come, <laughs> come just short in this one. Really? Why Portugal over Uruguay? <sighs> Cristiano Ronaldo will have a big game, and it'll be enough to get past Uruguay. Uruguay is a difficult team to play against, but I don't think they're as good as they have been in the past. I don't think you'd say that. Uh, friends, Croatia. Oh, it's France, I mean. Okay, is that France? France, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll go with friends. <laughs> uh, Brazil, Sweden? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Belgium, Senegal, that's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good game, but not good enough for Senegal. Really? Belgium's going go through. Okay, let's take it through to the quarterfinals then. Portugal, France. Uh, and that's game set match. That, yeah, you got press uh, that. Uh, sorry, yeah, sorry, go. my bad, my bad. Game set match for Portugal and Cristiano Ronaldo. See you yep. guys later. And Belgium, hey, yeah, well, you are a dark horse, not anymore. See, See ya. Take care, dark horse is gone. Uh, Brazil, France. Okay, let's take it to the other side. Spain, Argentina. <sighs> That hurts. Oh, yes, it's, it's a toy. I don't even remember what I did here, but Spain. Spain? Yeah. Uh, Germany, Colombia, I imagine a little easier. Yes, indeed. Yes, 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 yes. That South American love didn't last very long. <laughs> no, that's it. France and Brazil. It's Brazil. It's still Brazil. Spain, Germany. And it's still Spain. Eh, look, I'm not, I'm not picking upsets here. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with the higher ranked teams. When it comes to it, Neymar, Brazil, too much for Lopetegui, and Spain. Brazil then, to win at the World Cup, according to Ali. What do you think? Well, you can go over to the website, fill out the match predictor for your chance to win a share of $40,000.
length, really, about Brazil, but not too much about the defending champions. It just seems to be a given because they're Germany and because they've won it before and because they're organised they've got a good squad that they will go far in this tournament. Uh, they go quite away, but I don't think they're going to go to the very end. I don't think this is the Germany of four years ago. Uh, I think he's made a, a strange decision, the manager, in leaving Leroy Sané out. was one of the best players in the Premier League and playing Julian, or putting Julian Brandt in the squad. Uh, Timo Werner as a striker is an OK striker. He's going to lead the line. I don't think he's an outstanding player. So there's lots of things that I think are wrong with Germany. Remember, Hummels has had a poor season for Bayern Munich. He looks as though he, he's, he's slow to turn. He, he's not very good on his recovery runs. They're a good side, but they're not the side they were four years ago, and I think they've got a slight I think problem. one of the things we, we talked about it was the Leroy Sané issue, <clears throat> as good as he's been, was, was Yogi Love had more than hinted at the fact that it was, uh, it, was, it was the fact it might be a problem if he doesn't play, and I think that was more the issue than his actual football. Well, let's bring Raf Onyxstein into the show uh, from Moscow. Ross, uh, Raf, just explain why this photo is causing such problems in Germany. Causing problems because Ilkay Gündoğan and uh, Mesut Özil met with the Turkish president and Ilkay Gündoğan handed him a shirt, signed shirt that said my president, which uh, if you're representing the Germany team is not a great um, look really, um, slightly mixed message there. They were then sent to speak to the German president, the real one, to almost make up for their mistake. but. He's since come out, uh, Mr. Steinberg, and said he doesn't feel as if they really have seen where they went wrong, why it was wrong to meet somebody who's under huge criticism for human rights violations in Turkey and some German journalists, you know, in prison until recently. And it's because it hasn't really been addressed that this kind of lingers. And I think one or two people perhaps have always had the view that those are not really fully proper Germans, if you will, used it to show their disapproval and we saw those bulls in the stadium and we see this kind of slight uneasy situation continue to uh, pervade and uh, cause a bit of shadow, throw a bit of shadow onto the preparations. For How do you think England are going to start out this tournament? This is the team you think Southgate should go with or will go? I think this is the team he will go with. He's definitely going to play with a back three. Walker will be the right-sided centre-half, who's normally a right-back. Stone's the middle, Maguire, because they can all come out with the ball from the back. Trippier uh, hasn't got a great deal of pace, but he's a good crosser of the ball down the right-hand side. Rose, I think, is a good athlete and do well down the left-hand side. But it does mean you have to play with two holding midfield players. Dyer will probably be more of the holding. Henderson can get forward. Ali in behind Sterling and Kane. I think that's the side he will go with. Uh, why is Walker playing at centre-back when he's a uh, right? Uh, because Trippier is very good going forward. And I always believe if you're playing with three at the back, you're right. One of your centre-halves should be uh, a former full-back or is comfortable going out into full-back areas. If you've got centre-halves who aren't comfortable going into wide areas and covering the, the wing-back, you might have problems in 1v1 situations. Walker is as quick as anybody doing that. And England did that in 1996. I know it's a long time ago when they played with three at the back. Neville played as uh, the right-sided centre-half and Stuart Pearce played as the left-sided centre-half. So I think it sometimes worked and I think that's the best side that he could probably pick. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, more or less. I don't think he's got a lot of other options, to be honest. Uh, the worry I would have for, from an English perspective is, is the midfield and the, the back line in particular, particularly the back three. They're all decent enough players individually, but I was just saying to Robbo, all three of them want to come out with the ball. Maguire comes out with Leicester all the time. Stones takes chances, and all Walker will want to do is get forward because he hasn't really got that discipline. So there's no what I would call natural centre-half there that's going to sit and, I think, organise. So I think that could be a big issue. I think for well, they them. also I think do, that's why playing. So when one of those comes out, I'm not saying it's the right, but when one of those comes out, yep. Dyer as the holding midfield player will drop back in because he has played centre-half for Spurs quite a, on, a, on a number of occasions this season. I can tell oh, you. Robbo loves his wing-back. Yeah, yeah, oh, wing oh, wing the wing yeah. The again. wing back, wing back wing, bingo, we got that down. Uh, can I just say that we can talk about Maguire and Walker and this and that, but that England team that we just saw, mm. that team doesn't beat Germany. No, I don't think it does. And so, England is going to get to the round of 16, maybe advance past that, and then it's game over. Yep. And in my estimation, that's probably as good as they can hope to do. And, and, and to be honest with you, you look at, the, at, that, at that squad, and then you look at the list of players from the real top, top teams You're in this competition, and I just don't see 
there is, I think, a, a difference between the two. You're and absolutely right. They're in a different Gareth group Southgate's altogether. Gareth Southgate's got the best out of the players at the moment. They did well in the qualifying. I think they're going to get into the last 16, but no further than that. Last 16 and that's it, but last maybe 16 last is eight. fine. So say, last they, eight. say they lose to Colombia in the... In the that would be poor. If they lose to Germany, that would be... Well, it wouldn't be a surprise if a poor Colombian lost, would it? I mean, getting out, uh, the, grip, I, getting out the grip now for England is, 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 is the starter. It used to be a given years but, ago. But this group they'll get out of. They should. They should. Finish bottom of the group in uh, Brazil, albeit it was Tunisia a bit... Tunisia Panama, it they, was a they bit should be Tunisia well, and Panama. Should, well, they should, but that's, that's where their expectations are at the moment. They get out the group and then they take it from there. Right. I mean, years ago, at least they were trying to aim for a semi-final, which yeah. they did get to in 1990 with a much better team than this, by the way. So I don't see anything great for England. At so this, according to our ESPN FC editorial staff, is the top 10 World Cup power rankings... Um, Brazil, oh, thanks. Germany, Spain, France, oh, it's, uh, Belgium, England, Portugal, Uruguay, Colombia. I bet that took hours. Um, mm -hmm. Should we start with England? Ahead of Portugal, Uruguay and Colombia seems generous, does it not? A little bit generous. Well, you've got the European you've got Championships displays in the last World Cup. They're, they're a better side at the moment, but I don't think they're as high as that. They may have been a bit biased in there from the aforementioned editorial staff. Are you sen sensing that maybe... I, I presume they... The, I haven't got the, the facts and, and stats in front of me, but I, I presume the majority of them are of uh, English descent. Are they better than Uruguay, Colombia and Portugal? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Maybe they be really below all those sides? Above all those sides? Probably got, I think they're be better quiet. than Portugal at the moment. Well, I'm not, I'm not really that fussed about England because we're not going to be talking about them winning the competition. Well, no, but I'm talking about them in this context. <laughs> Somebody's put a list together, OK. Yes, and we're here to discuss this. Uruguay are better than England. <laughs> Uruguay and you go right England. to England. Colombia right? should be about England. Right England. So what, what's the big takeaway for you from this list? That, that, that it's so easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to say for three minutes it was easy to do. I have to pick, up some, uh, pick out something. You don't need... You don't need that right. Also side. receiving votes, Croatia and Mexico. <laughs> yes. Oh, and they'll be well pleased about that. Oh, yeah. hey, Croatia, I'll give me some votes. Uh, should Croatia be in the top ten? Right, uh, Robbo. Oh, yes. Should Croatia be in the top ten? No, I don't think they should be. Uh, no, they shouldn't be. They're a good side, but they're not going to go much further than the last 16. What about Mexico, Ali? They have some votes? I need to find some more teams here. Does that mean that we have Mexican me representatives teams. in their editorial room as well? Maybe, but do um, they deserve a place in the no, top ten? No, I don't think so. And, and I think even the Mexican media would tell you that they don't quite know what they're going to get from Mexico in this World Cup. Uh, there has been a whole lot of conversation about Juan Carlos Osorio and the rotation that he has with, with players, no consistency in the starting lineup. I don't see Mexico getting out of the group. And, and, and if that's the case, then clearly they don't belong in the top ten of the power rankings. Struggling now. Is there anyone in the top ten you feel should be there? No. <laughs> well, the thing is, we put a li this is this is where we're going. And and oh. lo and behold, when they put four to eight teams in, there's, there's, nothing's going to change. Right. So, what's the point? So what you're saying, you should just. Well, what's the point? Putting a list together, a power rankings list of World Cup teams, and saying, oh, discuss this. Oh, there's 15 teams that could be in there. No, there's not. There's not. So right. those, those ten are the right teams? About so, yeah. World Cup well, winners, well, Uruguay, the, first six, the first six of the teams. What about the order of those teams? I tell you what, this, this list is really upsetting me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You don't say. It's been a long day. I don't need editorial sending, sending us that. And then you're talking about England. Well, <laughs> I've got three minutes, Craig. What do you want me to do? I don't know. Think. Think outside the box. <laughs> For more on this uh, what? ranking, more? Uh, go over to the website. <laughs> Shaka's breaking it down. <laughs> oh, boy. Welcome to Extra Time. We've been in the studio for a very long time today. Yep. So who knows what this could deliver. Yep. You okay? <laughs> Get through this. The tournament's not started, and you're, you're already looking over at me thinking, how the hell... Am I going to get through this? I don't know. We've, we've what, had four years together, five years. You've done well to last that long. Well, there's been some tough moments. <laughs> Roller coaster, really. <laughs> Why are all experts rating Portugal so low? Isn't the fact they are reigning Euro champions in consideration? Some of ESPN experts, like Mr. Gab and Mr. Julian, didn't even have them getting out of the group and their respect. 
pr respective predictors. Where did you have them going? Your predictor, Cray. On your list. Can we put it up? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you remember. <laughs> so I got, imagine you got them finished second in the group. Right, then, who, then who were they going to play? Because you touched the screen. Remember? Someone. Big. Somebody tell me. Someone who wins their group. Somebody in Uruguay. Me. Tell me. Uruguay? I think they play Uruguay. I had Uruguay going through. Yeah? So, I don't know. Right. It's a predictor. It's all so I had here. them getting out of the group, and then I think I had them going out in the 16. Is that a flop for them? Well, you have to go to Lisbon. You're obsessed with a flop, aren't you? <laughs> uh, Uruguay, uh, Portugal, how far are they getting? Uh, I think I had them beating Uruguay and then losing in the quarters to France. Okay. Yeah. All right, we've got your predictor, Craig. Here it comes. Hey. Oh, yeah. Again. Uh, no Portugal. So Uruguay, you've got them beating Uruguay. So I didn't have them getting out of the group? Yes, oh, yeah, yes. Out the group. <laughs> the round of 16, bit before this one. Bit. Well, who are they playing in the round of 16? Uruguay. Uruguay. Where? At the top. Oh, my God. Oh, right. oh, the final. Oh, you have to put the graphic oh. up because I just said that. Oh, goodness me. Because Ali said Uruguay before they were getting the graphic. Have you got them? Uh, I've got them doing exactly the same as Craig. Why is this graphic? <laughs> not well, you did ask for the graphic. Oh, I asked for it and then they were too late to bring it up. You said Uruguay and the graphic come up. I don't want to see any more graphic. Who is going to finish the top scorer in this year's World Cup? Get that bloody thing uh. <laughs> Timo Werner. Timo Werner? Timo Werner. Wow. Uh, why? Well, Come on, why? Because Germany's going to get a lot of opportunities in the group stage, and usually you get somebody who gets a, one, a big game, maybe scores a hat-trick in, in the group stage, and then gets a couple more goals, and that's about it. It's six goals that get you uh, the, the golden boot, so there you go, Timo Werner. Timo Werner. I'm going to go for the obvious, Lionel Messi. I, think I think that's the obvious. He's not the favourite. I think he'll have a wonderful World Cup. He's going to score most of Argentina's goals. He will be the outstanding player in the tournament. If Argentina do well enough, which I think they would do well enough by getting into the last four. Thank you. What are you laughing at? I think I said Neymar. Right. You don't, don't worry about what you said before. No one's going to no, hold I, you to no, it. No, no, but I, I, I'm actually not worried. Well, then why do you keep bringing it up? I'm just trying to get it right. Why? If you're not worried, then why worry I'm about it? I'm trying to get it right. Why? I'm worried. I'm just trying to get it right. <laughs> why are you worried about it? I like to be right. You, you, you are worried, worried about it. You can't change your mind over the last two weeks. Right. When do you come back? <laughs> that, if things go <laughs> Craig, what is your favourite golf course you've ever played on? And have you ever had a hole in one? Yeah, I've had two. Pitch and putt, that one, wasn't it? Two holes yeah. in one. Did you see, did you see the pride there? Yeah, I've had two. <clears throat> I don't know why you had to wipe yeah, your yeah, nose yeah. when you said that. Because my nose was running. Two. That's a typical London thing. I know you, got, you spent a bit of time in London. When you say something, you have know, a little sniff after you say it. What's this guy? I'm having a sniff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually having a sniff because my nose is running. I've got a little bit of a, of a fever. <laughs> world <laughs> Cup fever, baby. Yeah, I've got World Cup predictoritis. <laughs> so. Uh, there you are. <laughs> I had two. I've, had, I've actually had two. And holes in one are not Did you keep scale. the ball? Is the ball the, framed at home? The lucky. When you get a hole in one, it's quite lucky. More than anything. Yeah. So did couple. you keep like, is the ball one framed? One of them I got in Portugal. Right. And I was uh, on a lad's golf trip, and it was the last day. Oh, and I, I, and I had, uh, let's just say, I wasn't in the best of condition. <laughs> Whilst playing? No, after the night before. Ah, okay. And so I was a bit rough. Right. And so I just got, got on the tee at the path of the hit any old club. That's the way you wrote it. Just uh, easy. And it went, yeah, you know, any that's, old club. You know, that's when I get, to, I get two. Not yeah. one, but two. Well, I've actually had three. <laughs> oh, my crikey. Oh. <laughs> Do your nose thing again now. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually had three. I'll tell you what, one of, them, but one of them was a provisional. So I put my first one yeah, in the drink. Count. Well, and then I hold, I hold it count. for a bath. No, I know it doesn't count. And that's why so why did you bring it up? Because I never bought the lads a drink. Why did you bring it said it was. Well, they're wrong. Well, technically, it's a hole in one. Well, it's not. Three. It's a three. Best course I've ever played? It's got to be a Scottish one, isn't it? Thunbury. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Anyone who can help Craig with Thunbury. <laughs> <laughs> Very difficult course. And uh, <laughs> if there's any tickets available, <laughs> I would... Wow. Uh, ESPN FC is with you every Same day, uh, by the way, throughout the world. We're with you every day anyway.